Good morning. Good morning. The following announcements of the opportunity to live our faith. Plastic Easter eggs and individually wrapped candy. Collecting those uh, for the children's Easter egg hunt on April the uh, 8th. Uh, the baskets are at both the Easter egg entrances and there is a tub in the kitchen area. Uh, it is time to order Easter lilies. Turn your order into the office by March 30th. On March 29th at 6 p.m. there will be Bible study in Heritage Hall. Uh, and today, the United Women in Faith Unit Meeting uh, with a call to prayer and self-denial program. All ladies are invited to attend at 2 p.m. Uh, Holy Week will include Monday, Thursday at 6 p.m. Good Friday at uh, 6 p.m. Easter egg hunt. 10 a, at 10 a.m. on April the 8th. The Easter sunrise service will start at 6.15 a.m. Uh, with Easter breakfast uh, at 8.30 a.m. and Easter worship at 10 a.m. with no Sunday school that day. And as always, please fill out the attendance pad at the end of your pew to let us know that you are with us in worship today. Good morning. Ooh. I just saw all of you wake up. It is a joy to worship with all of you this morning. One note about Easter Sunday, we hope that you are able to attend. We will have our sunrise service. For our breakfast, you are invited to bring your favorite breakfast food, pastry, muffin, casserole, whatever your favorite breakfast food is. The church will be providing um, coffee and juice and plates and silverware, so we hope that you will bring your favorite breakfast food to share with us on Easter morning. It should be a wonderful day of celebrating the risen Christ. Most importantly, I hope you know that whether this is your first time or you have been attending for years, whether you are strong in your faith or you still have some questions, no matter your age, your tax bracket, your ability, or the color of your skin, no matter who you love or who loves you, you are welcome here. And I invite you now to join me in our call to worship. Have you ever felt washed up, brittle, worn down to the bone? Have you ever felt like hope was out of reach? Have you ever wondered? If you have, then you are in the right place, for this is God's house. Hope lives here. So come, rest your weary bones. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing together hymn number 383, This is a Day of New Beginnings. We will sing verses 1 through 4.
as we affirm our faith. You can find the affirmation of faith on the screen and in your insert. We believe that God loves us. God loves us enough to weep when we are gone. We believe that God does not give up on us, breathing new life into tired bones. We believe that God returns to us, always seeking us when we are lost. We believe that God holds hope for us, so we hold on to hope as well. We believe Help our unbelief. In, In Christ's name, name we pray. pray. Amen. of gun violence, hunger, melting ice caps, and anxiety, it often feels like suffering has a microphone. How do we hear you? How do we find you? How do we know that these bones can live? Today we bring our raw selves into this space, asking once more that you would rush through this room like a mighty wind. Remind us that these bones can live. Speak to us in your still, small voice, and let it be loud enough to speak to the sorrow of the day. Amen. Thank you. 
Testament passage this morning. This is Ezekiel 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. And he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore, Prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. 
You may remain seated as we sing together hymn number 420, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. <laughs> Again, you are invited to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel, but if you need to sit at any point, that is okay. We know that we are showing reverence before God as we stand, and that reverence is shown when we sit. And so I invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Our scripture this morning is from St. John, chapter 11, verses 1 through 45. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus, of Bethany, the village of Mary, and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you. And are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep. But I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. 
Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his faith, face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The words of God for the people of God. You may be seated. <clears throat> the answer is yes, by Reverend Sarah Speed. It's the question we ask at the end of our rope, when the storm is raging, when the monsters under the bed have introduced themselves, when everything around us seems to be on fire. It's the question we ask when hope slips through like sand in a bottle, when the mockingbirds stop singing, when the news reporter leads with another mass shooting. It's the question we ask when the depression moves in, making herself at home, making a mess of it all. It's the question we ask when we're not sure if Easter will come, Will Lent be forever? Will the sun ever rise? Will this hope lead to something? Can these bones ever live? Amen. I find myself deep in hopelessness some days. I spiral around the climate emergency war, the terrifying surge in hate groups, technology overload, a church in decline. I worry about the future, especially as I think about what it will look like for my child. I struggle with the guilt of feeling like I'm not doing enough. I feel myself walking through the valley of dry bones. I feel myself and Mary and Martha who are in deep mourning. I feel the questions rising in myself. Is this world going to make it? Do we believe new life can come after death? Can we find hope when things are bleak? 
Can we really trust in God's resurrection? God, why didn't you get here sooner? Luckily, God also asks a question. God asks, can these bones live? God asks us, can you see past the rubbish, the damage, the crisis, the violence, the signs of decay? And can you imagine that life still lingers there? Do you dare to believe and even trust that the power of life does not ever go underground in such a way that God cannot revive it to glory? And not only does God ask us to find the life, the hope, the glory that lingers, God also meets us in our grief. God became human and lived a fully human life in Christ. And in Christ's full humanity, he experienced the grief of Mary and Martha amid the loss of their brother Lazarus. When we are faced with insurmountable grief, when we are struggling to find hope, when the world feels too overwhelming and like it is beyond repair, God knows exactly what we are feeling. And God weeps with us. And then... God invites us to find hope. In both of our texts, we find that when we are grieving, weary, and lacking hope, it may feel like we are gazing on a valley full of bones. A merciful God whose power is infinite, however, creates hope just when it is needed. When I read these texts, I want desperately to be the prophet. I want to be Ezekiel. I want to be the one speaking this new life over the earth. I want to be Jesus. I want to have the ability to say, Lazarus, come out of the tomb. I want to be the person in power. I don't want to be the dry bones. I don't want to be Lazarus in the tomb. I don't want to be Mary or Martha deep in their grief. And yet, those are often the places I find myself. In her artist statement for Rubble, Carmel Boglin recalls the death deadly earthquakes in Haiti that impacted many of her family members in 2010. <coughs> she questions how we position ourselves when we read the story we find in Ezekiel 37. She goes on to ask, who are we in this story? Are we the bones seeking life? Do we perceive ourselves as spectators of suffering? Or will we choose to be participants in healing as active agents of God's resurrecting power out of the rubble? There are times when it feels that like all I'm doing is being a spectator of suffering. I remember being a child watching the planes crash into the World Trade Center. I remember being a middle schooler watching the flooding and devastation her caused by Hurricane Katrina. I remember hearing about movie theater shootings and school shootings and car accidents and domestic violence and war and the global pandemic and the immorality of for-profit prisons and... And on more days than I wish were true, I have found it all but impossible to find any sort of hope. 
More days than I wish were true, I have found myself staring at the valley of dry bones. I, have fi I find it hard to choose to be a participant in healing as active agents of God's resurrection power. And then, Jesus, with the help of my anxiety meds, <clears throat> call me out of the tomb. Jesus does not eliminate the very real trauma and the issues that plague our society and our world. But Christ calls us, Christ invites us into resurrection. He invites us into hope. In her commentary for this week's theme, Reverend Danielle Schroyer writes, God doesn't ask us to believe the situation will get better. God asks us to believe that life itself will not, in the end, cower under the pressure of human destruction. Abundant life persists. That is what makes it eternal. Even when we have that trust, God asks us for more. God commands Ezekiel to prophesy to the bones. Jesus told those gathered to unbind Lazarus and let him go. This ridiculous, radical hope is not only ours to hold, but to proclaim. Not only are we invited into this ridiculous, radical hope, but we are called to share this ridiculous, radical hope. And this ridiculous, radical hope is deeper than the shallow platitudes we tell each other. It is a hope that invites us into deeper, more authentic relationship with Christ, with one another, with the world. It is a hope that tells us that our humanity is sacred and holy. It is a hope that tells us our humanity doesn't get in the way of God's resurrection. Our humanity doesn't get in the way of God's ability to bring about new life. It doesn't get in the way of God's ability to bring about abundance. It is a hope that tells us that we can both feel our grief and loss and see signs of hope. It is a hope that calls us out of the tomb and into healing. On Wednesday nights, sometimes our conversation gets caught in this spiral of there is no hope. The church is dying. Look at what is going on in the world. And so before I will let anyone leave, we all have to answer the question, where do you find hope? We find hope in the great work that is being done by this congregation in this community. We find hope in our friends and in our families. We find hope when we see strangers on the street doing good deeds for one another. No matter what the conversation has been, we are always able to find hope. And so, when the world feels heavy, when it feels too much to overcome, I get it. I am there in that feeling with you. And I also invite you to look for hope. May we be bold in proclaiming resurrection and proclaiming ridiculous, radical hope in the name of the one who calls us to our proclamation.
Amen. At this time, I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offering. Let us pray. O oh God, pour your blessing upon these our gifts, gifts that have been graciously given to us that we now humbly return to you. May you breathe new life into them and into us so that we might further your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. As we come to our time of prayer this morning, our full prayer list can be found on the back of the bulletin. We also want to lift up those who lost their lives and homes and those who suffered injuries in Friday night's tornado in Mississippi. Are there other joys and concerns we would like to share this morning? Seeing none, let us go to God in prayer. Oh God, you breathe into us the breath of life. When all hope feels lost, when the weight of the world is bearing down, you call us out of the tomb. God of grace, we lift up to you our prayers. Prayers for hope, Prayers for peace, prayers in the midst of our grief and loss. Prayers for our struggling world. Prayers for our divided nation. Prayers for ourselves. Prayers for ourselves when our soul feels divided. When we feel as though we are being pulled in far too many directions. When we feel the weight of the world. O oh God, you breathe into us the breath of life.
May we be reminded that no matter what, you are with us. That no matter what you call out to us, you pour your Holy Spirit upon us. <coughs> we are never alone. Oh God, we ask that you continue to show us signs of hope, signs of your grace, signs of your love. We ask that they come in still, small voices and in big ways that we cannot miss. And when we see those signs of hope, may you empower us, may you strengthen us, may you embolden us to share your radical, ridiculous hope. <coughs> oh God, we now pray to you as your beloved children the prayer that Jesus first taught. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. <coughs> Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <coughs> As we come to the close of our service this morning, I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing together, Can These Bones Live? The words will be found on the back of your, on the other side of your insert and also on the screens. We will be singing to the tune of Easter People Raise Your Voices. Margaret will play through the whole tune one time and then we will join in singing. Please stand as you're able. The hungry, seek the weary, seek the good in every person you pass. Seek out the hopeful, seek the thankful, the faithful. Seek God in each of us. As you seek and as you wonder, may you find what you are looking for. In the name of our loving God, who is always seeking us, go in peace. Amen. Amen.